Well, hi there. I'd like to show off the FLIR 1 camera that is an uh, add-on to your phone or tablet. This happens to be the Android version. They also show a, or sell an iOS version. I want to show this off because I think it is the best value out there right now. It's early 2016 for a thermal imager that you can buy because these are $250 before tax and I think it is a, again, just fantastic value. So here is the FLIR 1. Nice and small and compact. It's a very simple design. It has a micro USB charging port for it, uh, indicator light. This is the Android version, so it has a micro USB plug on it, has the power button because it has a built-in battery. And then on the front, it has a visual lens and an IR lens because it, it takes two images and then aligns them so that you get a nice outline, which I'll show you here in a second. So in this video, I wanna show off the hardware, show off the app on one of my phones just so you see how it operates, uh, show some of the closest competitors to this, uh, at least that I own and I think are competitors to it, and then show off the FLIR tool software, which you can get free online from FLIR, which I think is what really makes this a great value. I will point out the orientation that you should care about on your phone. So on this one, the micro USB, the long end of the connector is facing the screen, and that is the opposite direction of what you want, unless you're gonna buy one of those you know, $10 adapters to, to swivel it around. What you want is one where the long end faces the back of your phone, unless you're into thermal selfies. And if you are, then this other one is perfect for you. But for this, you just plug it into your phone like that. I already have this set up with the FLIR 1 app ready to go. And then it's gonna say, you know, please attach your FLIR 1 and turn it on. So after you plug it in, you push the power button, turn it on, slightly older phone, so it takes a little bit of time to power up here, but it will get going fairly quickly. And then it's going to show an image almost right away. I'm gonna turn it this way just so it points it out a little bit better. And this is my second uh, pass at this video. Uh, so the, this one is cooled down a bit and this one's warmed up a bit. But hopefully you can still see a delta there. And as it starts off, even though it's showing you an image, it's still calibrating. And one way to try or check that out is they have this little spot sensor you can turn on. And if that reads, if you can see this, it says it's about you know, a certain temperature. As long as it's saying that, it's still calibrating. But after about 20 seconds or so, that about symbol is gonna go away, and then you know that you're, you know, you're good with the temperatures that it's showing you. I do wish it showed a spectrum bar here, which told you, you know, hot is, you know, 100 degrees and cold is 40 degrees. It doesn't do that on this app yet. You may be able to tell that the visual, that outline there and the thermal aren't, they look kind of blurry. They're not really aligned. This app is fantastic in that you can just, click and hold on the image and brings up a slider bar that then you can move along and align those two images together. So that helps you get that outline right on top of the thermal image, uh, which I, I have their C2 camera I'm gonna show you in a second, and it is not nearly as good with the alignment of the two lenses as this one is. So that is one of the, the highlights of this app that I wanted to point out, that you can align those together uh, and get a really nice clean picture out of these. So let me show some of the competitors to this. So this here is the Seek Thermal that I bought about 15 months ago. And the only reason I'm showing you the case is, it's gotta be one of the best cases I have ever gotten in my life. <laughs> they did a fantastic job with this heart case. So here is their sensor versus the FLIR 1. Seek Thermal is a little bit smaller. This is their original one. This is their uh, also their Android version. They made the same choice, having an Android and iOS version, two different versions. This one cost me about $235. This one cost me $250 before tax. You'll see this one has one lens on it. So this is IR only. It will not do the MSX. It doesn't blend uh, and show you the outline, which if you had the two coffee cups like I was showing, that's really not a problem. You're gonna see you know, a hot shape and a cold shape. But if you're looking around your house, say you're looking at your walls, uh, looking for spots of the insulation that are, might be missing, this really comes in handy. Because if you're just looking at a wall and it's all about the same temperature, you can't tell where exactly you're looking. I'm sorry, I should be holding this one up. <laughs> you can't tell exactly where you're looking with a thermal only image, but with the visual added in, it's very easy. You go, oh, oh hey, there's my couch or there's my lamp or whatever. It's perfectly easy to tell or orient yourself in the room. So this one is a, the Seek Thermal is a great camera, but for just a little bit more to get the FLIR 1, I'm going FLIR 1 every day of the week. I've bought both of these and I like the FLIR better. Here is another FLIR. This is their C2 camera. So it also has two lenses. Uh, it has the same MSX technology. 
Uh, it's all contained though, you don't need a phone. It has a built-in screen, touch screen. Uh, but this one's $700. And it does about the same as the FLIR 1. One thing it does better for sure is it shows the spectrum on the side once it's calibrated. One thing it doesn't do as well is it doesn't have as good of a adjustment aligning the lenses. So this one has, I think, four distinct distances you can set, none of which are very close. Whereas this one on the app, you saw you just move that slider bar. So this one gets the win in terms of aligning the lenses. This one gets the win in terms of showing a spectrum on the side. But this one's $250. The C2, $700. So I'm going to say, again, the FLIR 1, one of the best values out there. I'm sorry, I think it is the best value out there right now for thermal images. So here's a quick look at the free software that you can get downloaded from FLIR. It's called FLIR Tools. And I apologize that I'm taking a video of a laptop screen, but it's the best setup I could get. So here are some pictures that I've already taken with the one and have downloaded uh, onto my computer. You can see here, you can select from different images, and over here it'll show you both the thermal image and the visual image that were taken by the camera along with some of the parameters. So if I go ahead and just open one of those up, so this is one that I took with the camera with the spot on it, and here it gives the spot temperature reading that's 73.7 Fahrenheit, has the emissivity reflectivity temperature, and you can change a lot of things, which is why I think this software is so powerful. For example, you can get rid of that spot if you want to. You can add a spot there. You can also add a circle here. And inside of the circle, it'll give you the max, min, and average temperature inside of there. You can always just, you can click on it, you can resize it, you can move it, you can do whatever you want with it. You can do the same with the spot. You can choose different shapes for these uh, and it will give you the same kind of information. But if you can click on it, you can always just delete it by hitting the delete key. Other things that you can do, you can change the emissivity very easily. You can type in any value that you want and you can see how the image is going to change and how it's, the temperatures also change with that. So the default in the camera is 0.95, uh, but you can, again, put anything you want in there after the fact. You can also change the scale. So this is the PC version. The Mac version is a little bit different in that the Mac version, you drag the scale up and down right here on the spectrum bar, whereas on the PC version, you do it on the bottom. So you can either move the scale, keep the same range, but move it up and down. You can also change the range by, sorry, I didn't grab that quite right, making it smaller or larger. Uh, and you can see how the, the temperatures are changing on the side there. You can hit auto this button right here on the bottom right and have it go back to the automatic scaling. You can also type in a value to have it change for you. You can always hit auto again and have it go back to what it would have been. Uh, you can change the color palette. So you can do this on the phone itself, but it doesn't matter what palette you use when you take the picture because you can always change it here. So you can use it from the image. I was using the rainbow one. And here you can just kind of go through. You can always select these and then save it, whichever one you happen to like the best. And you can pick any of these palettes and change the spectrum any way you want it to be. There's other things that you can do with this. Uh, what I happen to like about the tools is that with the FLIR 1, at least the current version of the app, uh, it won't save the, or it doesn't show you the spectrum bar, which is something I really like. But if you edit a picture with their tools and then you hit save, it'll save that spectrum right onto it. And I'll show you that in a second. But other things you can do, so this is the mixed one, like you see on the, the FLIR itself, or the FLIR 1, when you're looking at the app. It's got the thermal image and the visual image uh, overmixed on top of each other. You can change the mixture between, so that's all thermal, and that has a lot more of the visual in it. So there's just a slider bar here at the top that you can move back and forth. You can pick thermal only if you want. There's, which, this is thermal fusion, which I haven't played around with, to be honest. And there's thermal blending, which I also haven't played around with. Here is one which is a picture-in-picture. Picture. So in order to change this, there's an icon up here that says change picture-in-picture picture settings. You click that and you can resize the thermal image however you want and you can also move it around. So if you are, say you took a picture of a circuit card inside of a computer and you really just want to focus on the temperature of the circuit card itself, you can use this to highlight that card while keeping an image of the computer around it to put it in, into context. So you can, you can do any of those with it. You can also just view the, the visual image. You can also extract the visual image from the picture. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with these tools, which I, I think is just really nice.